We're very thankful to have another opportunity to come back out here to Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. We're thankful to the Lord to give us this opportunity to come this way. And uh, for anyone that would listen, uh, watch this uh, effort uh, in certainly every prayer uh, that's been lifted up on our behalf. I certainly appreciate it as well as all the preachers everywhere, uh, not just uh, pastors around here, but the young preachers, the ones on the mission field. And we need to uh, remember each one. We're going to look uh, today in the book of uh, 2 Samuel, the 11th chapter, uh, to take up a reading lesson and uh, read a few verses of Scripture. Uh, 2 Samuel 11, uh, and we're going to start uh, at verse 7. It said, When Uriah was come unto him, David demanded him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. And Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. And when they had told David the saying, and Uriah went not down to his house, David said to Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then thou didst not go down to thine own house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents. And my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in open fields. Shall I then go into thy mine house to eat and drink and lie with my wife? As thy soul, as thou livest, and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. Now with my mistakes that I uh, made there in reading... We look at verse 7 down through verse 11 for a reading lesson. And this is uh, after David, and I believe we should know the story. If we hadn't, uh, I know the account of where David looked, and he saw uh, Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, uh, washing uh, as he went out, and he was looking over uh, his uh, kingdom and looking outside, and he saw her, and he lusted after her, and he had her brought to him, and he uh, lied with her, and he... Uh, caused her to, to be pregnant. She become pregnant with a child. And, uh, and what he thought he would do is he would bring uh, her husband home from the war and cause him to go down uh, like most men would do. Uh, they'd be brought in from the front lines where it had been gone away from their wife for a while because it ain't like it was a few hours journey. It was usually a time that was spent, day's journey to get back and been gone for many, many days. And... He believed and trusted that his instinct would be of Uriah would be to go home and to clean up and to eat and drink and to lie with his wife and be with her. And then it would look like he was the one that had got his uh, wife pregnant and that he would be off the hook. And that was uh, David's intent. Uh, that was David's desire for that to cover up his tracks, so to speak. But we look here and we find that as they called Uriah in from the battle... Uh, and when the king calls, that's what you do. You should move and you should go. Uh, and we find that he went down and uh, he came back to, the, uh, 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 to David. David told him to go down to his house. Uh, and he even felt so guilty that he sent a mess of food down there and the meat there with him to follow him. But we find that it says in verse 9 that Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his Lord and went not down to the house. So instead of going what most men would do and their natural base instinct would be to do uh, is to go and to be with his wife, uh, he didn't leave the king's door. He slept right there uh, uh, with the servants uh, and went not down to the house. And we find that the servants uh, uh, began to tell him in the morning, you're right, I didn't go home. Uh, he, he didn't go back to his house. He's still here. And we notice here that he asked him, why didn't you do that? You've come from your journey. How come you didn't go back home? How come you didn't go down to your own house? Why would you have disobeyed me? Why would you have not went down there? Uriah said unto David, the ark in Israel and Judah abide in tents. And my Lord Joab and the servants of my Lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go down to my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As thou, thou livest and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. You might say, well, what is your, your point in this? Well, the thought that I have upon our, my heart this morning is being committed to the cause. 
Uriah here was committed to the cause. He was committed to Israel. He was committed to its safety. He was committed to the battle. He was committed to fight. Uh, that he had such an investment and such a love for uh, the Israel. And notice what he says. Uh, he said to David, the ark is out there. Now that ark, it represented something to them. It represented uh, represented the power of God and him being in their midst that when that ark was in their presence uh, that God's power was with them and they could win a battle and he had a love and he had a commitment to, he had a, a devotion to and a trust in uh, God Almighty and he said God's there the ark is there, Israel my countrymen are there Judah is there, he said and they abide intense. He said here that even his Lord Joab him that had commanded him he's there. I want you to know I can't go home. I can't take it ease. I can't lay back. There is a greater cause. There is a something that is more important than me and I want to be where the battle is. I want to be on the front line. I want you to understand what I believe here is your Uriah was very committed to the cause of Israel, to the cause of God. We might hear this word commitment. I looked this up. It says the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause. The state or quality of being dedicated to a cause. There was a time and that ought to cut David alone to his heart. Because there was a time that David, when he was young, and many times when we are young and coming up and we get a zeal uh, for the Lord's work and we get a zeal uh, for going to church and we get a, a zeal and very zealous to meet as many services as we can or uh, studying the Bible or uh, making talks or whatever it might be, man, how zealous we are. Well, David was once that way. Uh, he was very zealous. Uh, he had a desire for Israel. He had a desire for God. And when uh, Goliath, had a challenge uh, and defied the armies of Israel uh, for one to come and fight him. And they all cowered. Uh, and David's father had sent him down there to take some supplies. And he ran to the battle. And here he was uh, there before him. Uh, and they said, you've just come uh, here uh, just to be in the way. And what did David say in verse 29? What have I done now? Is there not a cause? He knew there was something more important than him taking it easy at home. He had a desire to be in the battle for the Lord. And we find here that he said, I'll go, me and the Lord will go, for the battle's not mine, it's God's. He had a desire for that cause. Uriah had a desire for that cause. He had a, a burning desire, a loyalty, a commitment to the cause of God. David, he had lost that fire. He had lost that uh, uh, vision of where he needed to be. Notice what it says was out there in the battlefield. And if you look and you study the scriptures, you'll find that there was somebody missing uh, that should have been out there on the battlefield. It says the ark in Israel and Judah abide in tents. So the ark was out there. Where was the king of Israel? Where was he? Was he out there where he should have been? Was he out there on the front lines? No, he had laid up at home. He had taken at ease. He had took his eyes off of the real purpose for him being in this world. He had took his eyes off the Lord uh, and the commitment that he should have had to the cause of Israel, uh, to what God would want him to do. And when he laid back and he was not out there where he needed to be, guess what happened to him? The devil come in and the devil tempted him and he fell to that temptation and he caused a woman to be pregnant out of wedlock. He committed adultery right there and let me tell you he brought shame upon the cause. He brought shame upon the people of Israel and then he tried to cover it up more by having Uriah use 
in his very zeal and his de commitment, his desire and love for Israel, uh, for his king. He used it against him, sent him to the heat of the battle, and they drew back and he died. We know that this was seen of God Almighty, how that David had done this thing and how he had gave great occasion uh, for those of the enemies of God to speak against them. His cause became himself. And I'm afraid many times that we as preachers, as congregations, as whoever you want to name, name them all, deacons, everybody, We've made the calls about ourselves and we've not been committed to the cause of God Almighty. I believe that we are seeking out our own desires more than the good of the cause of God. And by doing so, all we're doing is making a mess out of it. And I'm going to tell you what, we need to be more like your eye. We need to look to the example. And in this lesson, we find one that was committed to Israel with all his heart, willing to abide in the tents. Now, there wasn't no glory in abiding in a tent. Uh, your eye doesn't say that your eye was some great warrior, uh, that he stood out above everybody else. It doesn't say that as far as his, his uh, ability to fight in war and in battle. You know, sometimes that's what we want. We want glory. We want our own glory. This cause is not about our own glory. It's about the glory of God. It's about it going on to another generation. And I'm afraid that we've lost sight of that. And we're looking for our own glory, our own justification. That's what David was trying to do. He made it about himself. But let me tell you what, we need to be a look to the example of Uriah, that we're willing to sleep in tents. We're willing to give up. We're willing to, uh, to pay the price that needs to be paid for the good of the cause of God. Y'all bear with me here just a little bit. There's too many that are like Haggai in the book of Haggai today when they was building back the temple, more like David. I'm afraid we got a little bit too much of that uh, negative part of David, that, that faulty part of David in us, and that that is the, the bigger percentage of our, our lives and even the people that attend, the ones that don't attend, the ones that are preaching. We're more worried about self and our own pleasure. What did he tell him there in the book of Haggai? He said here in verse 2, Thus be the Lord of hosts, saying to the people, The time has not come. People say the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word came of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O you that dwell in sealed houses, and this house lie in wait? What was he telling them there? They were building that up, and they went along the way, and they lost their zeal. They were not com fully committed to the work that was at hand. They got excited as it started out and then like a sparkler. You know, a sparkler will shine and it'll uh, have a little fizzle and then it don't last long. The Lord don't need sparklers. He needs those that are going to withstand and their light shine all the days of their life. And here we find that they started out, they were working and they were laboring and they got tired, they got discouraged, uh, they got to desire in their own way and they went and they built up and they had their own houses. They were worried about their own lives. They were worried about their own ease more than completing the work of God. I want you to know today uh, that you may do that and I may do that. The Lord's church in this county may do that. But let me tell you, if we think we'll build up our lives and gain anything out of it, we are wrong. What does the scripture say? It says here, Now therefore thus say the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You've sown much and you bring in little. You eat, but you have uh, not enough. You drink, you're not filled with drink. You clothe, but there's none of you warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages, uh, to put it in a bag full of, uh, uh, to a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of uh, hosts, consider your ways. What is he saying there? Uh, you're you're going to sow much and bring in little. You're going to work and you think it ain't enough. Eat and it's never enough. Drink and you're not filled enough. Clothed and you're still not warm enough. Uh, earn and you're going to feel like you put it into a bag with holes in it. I'm going to tell you what we are laboring for. 
will never bring us the satisfaction of God. It cannot replace what God could do for us. We have become too worldly minded, too centered upon ourselves, making our lives about what we want instead of the cause of God. And I will assure you today that the cause is suffering. The church is suffering. It ain't suffering in 20 years. It'll just be suffering worse in 20 years. Today we are suffering because we are not committed to the cause of God Almighty. You might say, well, Brother Kevin, you, ain't, you can't judge me. I go to church every Sunday. You know what you can do? You can go to church. You can fill up his benches here every Sunday and not be here. You can fill this seat and in your mind and in your heart, you're far away. I'm going to tell you what, we've got too many Baptists uh, that are out there today, too many in the Lord's church that are going through the motions. They play in church. They come in, they take their seat, they listen to the preacher, they watch their watch, they go through a handshake, they're out the door as quick as they can, and they'll come back at the next appointed time that they got to be here. They are not committed to the cause of God. They are giving God the leftovers. They are not laying at the gate. They are not there willing to say, I will suffer, I will give up, I will sacrifice for the good of the cause. I know that it's more important myself. They are, well... I'll just say it. I ain't never heard it said this way. Drive through Baptist. I'm going to tell you what, it's a good thing we ain't come up with that. We'd have to have the windows up so somebody could uh, 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 throw in a dollar so that would ease their in, uh, 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 worry about whether they give to the church or not. Hear something just a little bit and take right off. Take right off. That's the way we want is drive through Baptist that we are not committed to the cause of God. Uh, we are more like David. We're committed to ourselves and not to the great cause of God Almighty. And my brothers and sisters, she's suffering. Notice here what we find in the book of Luke in the 14th chapter. It says here in verse 25, And there went a great multitude to him and turned, and he said unto them, If any man hate not his father or mother, wife and children, brethren, sisters, yea, uh, his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And that might be some, uh, and I believe you've got to... Uh, 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 Trust in nobody but the Lord for your Lord's uh, for your salvation. I believe that with everything in me, you can't trust in mother or father or love anything above the Lord. That is what the Bible teaches us. But here we're talking uh, not about being saved, but being a disciple, a follower, a what does the scripture say? An adherent to the doctrines of another that if we're going to be a disciple of the Lord, then we're either going to be one or we're not going to be one. We're either going to be a Baptist or we're not going to be one. In the Lord's eyes, we are not fooling him. And if we're going to be a follower of man, love man, and be committed to man more than God, then we are not his disciples. We're followers of man. Who are you committed to today? Are you committed to your pastor? I believe in praying for you, pastor. I know I want the church's prayers. Are you committed to that preacher, that pastor, that helper in the meeting? You can pay, and there's uh, people and, and raised up preacher's kids. I've got, I was raised up a preacher's kid, my daughter, uh, many others. I don't want her being committed to her daddy. I love her. And I know that she loves me, but I want her being committed to being a follower of the Lord. That's who her commitment. I appreciate her support. I appreciate anyone's support uh, in prayer and encouraging words and, and coming to hear from time to time. That, I appreciate that. But I'm going to tell you what, we got too many that are their commitment is to the preacher. They're emotionally tied to them and they are not committed unto God Almighty. Are you committed unto man? Are you committed to the cause? We need to be committed to the cause of God Almighty. To God and His cause. That's what should come first. Our first love. We mind it says here, and whosoever doth not bear his cross. So, man, there's a, a bearing, a, a, a burden that we must carry. Now, there's a lot of people, they're all in. For shouting. They're all in for testifying and singing the Days of the Week song. And I've got no problem with any of those things. 
But that is what they want out of serving the Lord. But if you want to be committed to the cause of God, you want to be a disciple of the Lord, somewhere along the way, you're going to have to have a burden for it. A, a, a burning desire, a heaviness, a loss of sleep. Uh, you're going to have to have some worries and concerns about its health and well-being. That burden of that cross is a necessity to be a disciple of the Lord. Now, you don't believe that your eye wasn't a, a, a bearing a burden? He said, I'd rather abide there and out in there in tents, and I'd rather be out there than them instead of laid up at home where I got it easy. What does it go on and say? And come after me, cannot be my disciple. For which of you intended to build a tower and sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he's have sufficient uh, to finish it? Let's happy that after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all that behold it began to mock, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king goeth to make war against another king and sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh to him against 20,000? Or else while the other is a great way off, he sendeth ambassadors and desire conditions of peace. So likewise... Whosoever be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath cannot be my disciple. What is he saying here? Somebody it builds a house. And they're going to build it and pay for it as they go. And we, we see very little of that in our time. People can't afford it. But used to, people from this area know if you went to Hartsville and you was going to Gallatin and you went to Hartsville on, on uh, Highway uh, 25 and you went down through there, you'd get there to a certain point in Castalian Springs vicinity, and there was an old ha house there. It stood for many years, and it had metal studs. It was built uh, uh, with metal studs uh, uh, as the framework of that house. It stayed that way for years. I mean years and years and years. It's finished today, but it stayed that way for years. I don't know what happened to the owner. They may have died. They may have run out of money. Health might have got them. There, there, there is a multitude of things that could have happened that caused them not to finish, uh, be able to finish that house. But the work stopped. For one reason or another, the work stopped. Uh, they took off on it. They got it to a point of here. Uh, it, it looks like it's on its way. And then it stops. Uh, their uh, workers stop. Uh, the money ran out. I, I don't even know the real reason that that happened other than it sat there. And it would remind me of this verse of Scripture, how that they, the cost sometimes is not calculated. Now, uh, Uriah, he calculated up the cost. He knew that he wouldn't get to see his wife whom he loved. He knew he wouldn't get to sit in, a, in his home. He knew that he wouldn't be able to uh, to sit in a home where nobody was trying to kill him, uh, that he was there in his safety. He, he knew those things existed. An easier life was at home and staying back there. And he said, I know out in that tent they could slip up on us. I know we're not going to, we're going to be in the elements. It's going to be colder. I know that uh, my life's in danger and the food won't be the same, that I'm not going to be with my wife and find, uh, find comfort with her. Uh, and what he said was, is I'm willing to pay that price. Uh, that is a small price to pay, to not be with my wife, to not have the ease and comfort at home, to not have to worry about whether I'll die in the next battle or not. He said, I'm willing to pay that price. That is what I will give up and I will live that way for the benefit of Israel and the cause, I'm willing to do that. He knew the price and he had a chance to give that up. He had an easier way provided and he still wouldn't take it. My brothers and sisters, I'm afraid that there's many that have counted up the cost. And they said, I ain't willing to pay that price. They said, this is going to be too hard. I'm going to have to give up too much. Uh, I like to travel. If I, I preach the gospel and do what I should, I, I won't be able to travel like I, I once did. Well, bless your heart. I, I'll, lay, I'll lay down a night and cry for you that you can't go travel uh, because you've got to go preach the gospel. I'm going to tell you what, we need to be traveling preaching the gospel is what we need to be doing. Say, so, well, we, if we're going to be there every Sunday, we won't be able to take vacation and catch the weekend. Well, cry me a river. 
That's a small price to pay. If that's what you're worried about, getting an extra day in on the weekend so you can be off and see God's creation. And people can tell me, oh, I can feel the Lord there the same uh, as I do here. Well, let's just all go then. You're not committed to the cause and don't act like we are when we are going to choose things that are our way and our cause and our joy over the cause of God. Wonder if we all decided one Sunday, I've got somewhere to be. I need a day off. Wonder if we all chose that. And visitors come, the lost come, and there was nobody here. I tell you what, we ought to be horse whipped is what we ought to be done. I'm going to tell you what, there is a price to pay. Our life is not our own. We are bought with the price, being saved by the grace of God, united with His church. We are not our own anymore, and we are either going to commit ourselves to this great cause that it might be furthered, or we're committing ourselves to the cause of ourselves and man. I'm going to tell you what, that's what we're doing. Say, so we're going to, we're going to justify ourselves and do whatever else. Well, you do whatever you want to do, but I'll tell you what, God will know whether we're committed to his cause or not. And I'm preaching to Kevin just as my much anybody else. Let's take a look at one that was committed to it now. And there's been many since. In Acts in the 20th chapter, we're going to see here in verse 22, it says, Now, behold, I go bound in the spirit on Jerusalem, not knowing the things that should befall me there. Bound in the spirit. Now, when you bind something, something bound up, it's confined. It's confined. Um, I believe the, it was Paul. Well, I know it was. Said in one portion of scriptures, I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Now, most prisoners... They don't want to be prisoners. They don't want to be in jail. <clears throat> they don't want to be restrained. They're, they're there against their will. Paul here was a willing prisoner. He was a willingly bound. Uh, he had the choice to be bound or not, to have that heart, have that desire, to have that commitment to the Lord and to the cause of God. He said, I'm bound. I, 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 there, there ain't no way for me to want to get out of it. I, I ain't going to try to get out of it. I'm bound to go. I'm going to tell you what, there's some, they look for every way not to do something before they'll ever do what uh, we have to do for the cause of God. Save that the Holy Ghost witness in every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me there. Saying, there's going to be trouble. I don't know what's going to befall me, but they say there's going to be bonds and afflictions awaiting me there. Notice what he says, but none of these things move me. So, so that, if they think that putting me in jail is going to affect me or whipping me is going to affect me, he's saying, that don't, that don't move me an inch. That don't, that don't cause me any uh, uh, worry whatsoever. He said, but none of these things move me, neither count my, my life dear to myself. He said, if you think that I'm worried about preserving my life, that I will, I will give up on God and I will give up on this cause, that I'm going to give up on my Lord for my own life. You got another thing coming. I, I, I don't even value. I, I don't count my life dear. He knew whom he trusted. He was worried about the advancement of the cause of God. He said here so that I might finish my course uh, with joy. My ministry which I have received the Lord to testify the gospel of uh, grace of God. He said I, I'm in this for someone other than me. I'm in this for the Lord, and I'm in this for His cause. I, I'm not worried about me. And they went on, you look in this next chapter. Uh, they was worried about what was going to happen to them. And they were trying to get him not to go because they knew trouble would await him. I'm going to tell you what, uh, there may be trouble. There ain't no may. Trouble is awaiting. I don't know. I don't listen to a whole lot of news, read a whole lot of things. But I'm going to tell you what little I hear and what little I read. This country is getting more and more ready to persecute the Christians, those that have been saved by the grace of God, those that will proclaim Jesus Christ. There is trouble coming. And I'm going to tell you what, we're on the edge of war, it seems, all the time. And these other nations, they could care less about our freedom of religion in this country. I'm going to tell you what, trouble is a coming. And if we're going to do the work of God, we will find trouble somewhere along the way. They tried to get him not to go. Notice what he said in uh, Acts 21 and 13. Then Paul answered and said, What mean ye 
to weep and to break my own heart. For I'm not ready to be bound only. I'm not ready to be in prison just to be prisoned and took and drugged down there. He said, but I'm also to die at Jerusalem in the name of the Lord Jesus. He said, if you think my biggest fear is being locked up, I'm not afraid of that. He said, I'm not afraid to die for the Lord. I, I'm not afraid to give up my life. He went on to a point and said, I'm going to straight betwixt two to stay uh, uh, or to, to leave. To die for me was gain, but to stay here is beneficial to you. He said, I'm a winner either way, and I ain't afraid to die. I'm not afraid of what they'll do, because guess what? I've got a bigger purpose in mind. I'm going to tell you what, he was committed to the cause of God. We've got vehicles that can drive hundreds of miles on a tank of gas. And we can't find a way to put the key in it to drive to church. That might be five or ten minutes, thirty minutes away, an hour away. We can't seem to figure out how to do that. But boy, if we had something we want to do, son, here, here we go. Let's go. You know what our forefathers suffered in this part of the country, how they walked to church? Walked. Walked to church, which means they lived close to church. Church is what kept them there. They didn't move away from it. They, got, they stayed close to it because they said, well, but all the jobs are down here. Well, what's more important, the job or the Lord's church and his cause? I'm going to tell you what, the cause is more important. No doubt about it, the cause is more important. They walked, horses, buggies, they come in. No air conditioning. Oh, pot stoves. Didn't have bathrooms. Uh, we wouldn't know how to serve the Lord today without a bathroom in the Lord's church because guess what? We make a 40, 100, 11 trips to the bathroom anymore. We used to have old outhouses where I grew up. I was scared to death. You didn't want to go because you didn't know what was out there when I was a kid growing up. Afraid something slithered in. Let me tell you what. We are soft Baptists. Let's call it what it is. We are soft we are spoiled. We think we really done something. Let me tell you what. We ain't holding a candle to. We are letting down. We have made this. We've made our tents. We say, well, we, we've got it rough. Well, I, we don't need big plush buildings. I ain't worried about that. But we've done everything we can to make our lives easier. And I do believe the church house ought to be as good a shape, if not better, than our own homes. We ought to respect it and love it. Not leave this in, in the dust. But I'm going to tell you what. We've got soft. And in that, if we've sought our own pleasure, our own way, our own cause. But are we committed to the Lord's cause? I'll say this to anybody that's a preacher. You don't get to pick this up when you feel like it. You don't get to study it when you just feel like it. You've got to be committed to it. If you have been called to preach... You don't get days off. This is not I do it when I feel like it. I study when I feel like it. I go when I feel like it. I, I, I'll get a hot spurt and then I, I'll, I'll cool off. I'm going to tell you what. This is a lifelong commitment. And you know what? I'm the worst at it that there's probably ever been. Uh, it needs to be somebody here else doing this better than me. Wouldn't take hard to find one. Be a hard find at all. Let me tell you what, I'm thankful that the Lord's given me that. I'm thankful been raised up. I'm not as good as my forefathers were. I can assure you that. But are we committed to the cause of God? That's the thought the Lord's laid upon our heart today. And I pray that this will be of some benefit uh, to us as a whole, that we'll wake up and look at ourselves, figure out who are we loyal to? Who are we committed to? We better be committed to our Lord and Savior and to His church and this great cause. Thank you for listening and may God bless you.